Bonjour à toutes, bonjour à tous, c'est Mathieu Loubière, je suis très très heureux de vous retrouver pour un nouveau podcast de euh, la chaîne de GMK. Aujourd'hui, je reçois Klaus Beyerlein lors de sa venue euh, à Dole pour nous parler du concept Milligal. Il nous explique un petit peu comment ça fonctionne, euh, comment est organisé le concept et en quoi ça consiste. Comme d'habitude, retrouvez sur notre site internet www.gem-k.com des cours gratuits, des articles commentés et d'autres interviews. N'hésitez pas également à nous soutenir en vous abonnant à notre page Facebook, en nous mettant un like ou alors en partageant cet enregistrement. Je vous souhaite une très bonne écoute. A bientôt. Hi, Klaus. Hi. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. We have to say that this is our second day uh, in training day, so I'm a little bit tired. I probably make mistake in English, but... Uh, well, we, will, we will get along with it very well, I think. <laughs> okay, we we'll see. So, uh, for beginning, thank you very much uh, for answering to my question. And um, I like to make interviews, uh, but first I just wanted... Um, that people know more, have more information about you. Can you present yourself and your education, your activity? Sure, I can. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank, uh, thank you for inviting me to give a course in, in, in uh, France. This is the first time for me in France and I really appreciate this invitation. Uh, my name is Klaus, I'm a physiotherapist from Germany. I got my training, my first training in, uh, in Germany and then I moved on to get um, a training in, uh, in Australia. Actually, I went to uh, Curtin University 2001 to do a master degree in manual therapy. Um, I have a diploma in sports science uh, from the University of Tübingen and uh, I also got a PhD from the medical faculty of uh, University of Ulm. Um, so basically that's it. I'm, I, I have a private practice where I, I see patients and I work uh, clinically. Um, I'm also an editor of the journal Manual Therapy from Thieme Verlag in Stuttgart. And um, basically why I'm here, um, to do a course on the Mulligan concept. Um, I became a teacher in 2002 and I'm one of uh, more than 50 international teachers worldwide. Okay, and uh, you have a lot of different activities. How, how do you split your time? I mean, uh, if we take an, av an average week, mm -hmm. uh, how many patients do you see? Or? Well, at the moment, and this changes from time to time, at the moment I, I see um, not a lot of patients, let's say about five to ten patients a week, okay. and um, the rest is, is uh, teaching. But not only with uh, postgraduate students like you are here in, in France, but also I'm a lecturer at, at a physiotherapy school where I uh, teach um, rehabilitation and prevention and also I'm involved into, um, in, into research and, and evidence-based practice. So this is probably the most, the most part. Um, I'm, it's teaching, a little bit of clinical work and the rest I would say it's um, preparation for conferences mm. and also um, writing some articles but the biggest part, let's say 80% is, is teaching either postgraded but also with young physiotherapists who start their career. Okay, and then um, what do you like uh, in your job? You have many activities, what do you like? Well basically I have to say, I, I'm, and that's the, the reason why I still do it after 17 years Uh, teaching that's that's my that's my thing I like to meet people from different countries I love to, to teach also in, in, in foreign countries where to get I, I get an um, um, I get an idea how they work so meeting people teaching that's what I like to do and, and um, every day is different so um, mm. I, I, I really enjoy that okay cool and uh, mm. This is a difficult question. Uh, what you would like to change if there is something need to be changed? What, what I love to change, <laughs> um, but I'm not sure if that will, that will happen. Um, 
that's something I wrote in my PhD thesis uh, because I was I was talking or writing my thesis about um, the management of, of patients and if German physiotherapists are capable to identify red flags and if I could change I would change to a um, direct access system which we don't have in uh, uh, in Germany, and I know from you, from our talk yesterday, that you don't have the direct access in um, in uh, France as well. And that, if I could, I would change that because um, I think a lot of patients don't need to go to the general practitioner or to the doctor. They could immediately see a physiotherapist for for their problem. So I would like to to have the direct access in Germany, like. In Australia or in Norway or in the Netherlands so we can treat uh, patients more effectively. And you think it's possible in Germany? Well I'm not sure about that actually mm -hmm. that's a diff difficult qu question because some physiotherapists in Germany they work really traditionally and they are happy that they got a pre prescription from the general practitioner from the mm -hmm. doctor and I'm not sure as well uh, that every physiotherapist in Germany could work in direct access because they don't have the competencies mm. to do so. Okay, um, thank you. You said before uh, that you are teaching the Mulligan concept and um, I just wanted uh, to, um, uh, to put a little stone uh, about uh, this uh, uh, the concept. I mean, some people in France doesn't no, mm -hmm. no, no, this concept. So, uh, can you explain us what, uh, what is, what is concept? Yeah, sure. So, um, basically, the Mulligan concept is a concept in manual therapy. Mm -hmm. We don't have to forget that it's manual therapy. You touch people and um, you, you mobilize joints, but the the specificity or the the key feature of the Mulligan concept is probably the combination of a passive accessory movement like a glide, like a rotation, like a translation or a traction, which is um, combined with an active movement on the side of, of the patient. And that's probably something what is, uh, what is new in manual therapy or what hasn't been done from other manual therapy dinosaurs like um, Mackenzie or Maitland or Carlton von Evient. So this is probably the, the key feature, the combination of passive movement and active movement. Okay, um, can you tell us more about uh, Brian Mulligan and uh, how we discovered um, the principles, principles uh, of his concept? Well, Brian is a really nice guy. He's from New Zealand. He's, uh, he's uh, located in Wellington. He's on the uh, manual therapy tour already for a long time um, and in the mid 80s to the end 80s he has discovered by chance just with a lady who had sprained her, her finger while playing basketball he has discovered that uh, the combination of passive accessory movement and active movement worked better than any other thing he had done before so that's, that was the start of the Mulligan concept and it's now a concept which is established in, in all over the world and his idea has, has been spread all over the world. Okay, um, you talked uh, yesterday about one acronym and uh, it made sense for me. Uh, can you explain it? it the acronym is PIL mm -hmm. and uh, I find that these four letters resumes a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So Brian Mulligan is talking about a pill and what he, he means by that is that he, he believes that his techniques should work like a pill, like, mm -hmm. like a, a, a painkiller, like a, a pain pill and these letters stand for different things. So the P is for pain free, that means that the techniques when you apply them they should be pain free. So the, the I uh, stands for instant change or instant result. So if if Mulligan techniques are indicated, they should work immediately. So they you should have an instant re, uh, result, and um, that would happen 
if someone has a mechanical problem, um, we are able to change this problem quickly. So instant change. And the double L uh, stands for long lasting. What mean if we do the techniques in a proper way and we, in, if we give the patients a self-treatment exercise or a home exercise, then we should um, have a long-lasting effect, not over, not only one hour or two hours, but they should have a long-lasting effect, meaning two weeks, two months, or even longer. Okay, and um, uh, we know that there are um, a lot of acronym in um, Mulligan, and um, I choose two, uh, and if I if we could add some expl explanation about that. Uh, the first one is MWM and the second one is NAG. Okay, so basically MWM is the abbreviation for mobilization with movement. On all, in all the techniques which are done on the extremities, um, they are called MWMs, mobilization with movement. And the other feature is SNAG, uh, what stands for sustained natural apophysial glide and basically a snag is a mobilization with movement on the spine and no matter if it's the cervical spine or the thoracic spine or the lumbar spine um, Brian Mulligan calls them snag so snag is a mobilization with movement on the spine and MWM is a mobilization with movement on the extremity Okay, and why it changed the name? I Be decided to make it different. Well, because um, 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 uh, an, an, uh, an, an uh, apophysial joint uh, is only you only have this in the spine, so that's why okay. he okay. he doesn't use the same word for the spine than for the extremities. Okay, um, I let you. <laughs> And having a little beer, thank you, uh, <laughs> Mathieu, for the nice beer. You're welcome. Um, could you give us an example of a classical treatment? Well, when I think about a classical treatment, I would probably think about um, the treatment of tennis elbow. Mm -hmm. That would be someone who has pain with, for example, gripping, and uh, the pain is on the lateral aspect of um, the elbow joint. So it's lateral pain. What you would do with the mobilization with movement, you would try to do, a, for example, a lateral glide. Normally we use a belt and you would apply an accessory glide towards lateral. And while you're maintaining that glide, you ask the patient to grip. And if this um, translation or if this treatment is indicated, you would experience, you, you would think that um, gripping wouldn't be painful anymore. So the combination of lateral glide and gripping is used when you have someone with tennis elbow pain, meaning the pain is on the lateral side. So that would be the combination of gliding at the elbow and the active movement in this case would be gripping. Okay. Um, I think um, you said today that there is a, a lot of uh, literature about um, science uh, besides or there is a lot of um, triol about um, the efficacy of a mulligan concept isn't it yeah is there a researcher around the world who work around the mobilization with movement yeah concept well we are glad to have not only clinicians i mean most of our teachers are clinicians but we have a couple of teachers as well who work as a professor at mm -hmm. different universities like uh, I'd like to mention Toby Hall from Curtin University of Technology or also Wayne Hing from Bond University in, in, in Queensland. And they, they also have students and um, if they have master students, um, they have a lot of output in, in research. So we, have, we really have um, evidence for some techniques that they are working and not only working because of experience, because they also have been tested in, uh, in, in research, res research studies and um, we are happy with that. Of course, we, we need more research and hopefully there will be more research about the Mulligan concept, but uh, I'm very confident that um, in the next years we, we will have some more output and um, that's necessary because 
um, evidence-based practice um, does not only mean that we have one study, but evidence-based practice means that we have also the experience of a clinician and we also have uh, the patient, which is important. And if we put these three things together, then we can talk about um, evidence-based practice. It, it's, it's not sufficient to only have a study because there are some techniques where we don't have a study and they are working and we should accept that as, as, as practitioners, I think. Okay, if you didn't say that, I will probably ask you this question. Um, just last question, how is organized the cursus in Mulligan concept? Well, as I said, I'm, I'm happy to be in Dole and, and to do a, a Mulligan course for my French colleagues and um, normally the courses um, are scheduled around the world in the same way because the content is the same. So if I talk about France and uh, Germany, for example, we have two three-day courses. So you have, we have module one and then module two, and they can be followed by module three. So basically after the two three-day courses, which is um, which is upper extremity and cervical spine for the module one and uh, lower extremity and lumbar and thoracic spine for module two they are followed by um, by the module three basically this is a refresher and also the exam the CMP exam and, and CMP basically stands for certified Mulligan, Mulligan practitioner and um, I hope that we can next year, so in 2020, we can organize a, a series in Dole uh, where, we, um, where we have a Module 1 course, Module 2 course and also the possibility for a Module 3 and for the French uh, practitioners to do a CMP exam. Mm -hmm. That would be, would be great. That would be, yes, I, I, that would be great. Um, thank you very much. You deserve a no, little bit of no worries now. at all. Thank you. <laughs> and um, thanks uh, to answer to all these informations. It's really interesting, and I think um, we need to develop a Mulligan concept because it's really nice. I think. Thank so, you, Mathieu. See you. Bye. See, See you. Soon. Bye bye. Thank you very much.